what's for dinner? Uh, well, it's Sunday night, and I decided I was going to make Swiss steak. The weather finally turned here, high of 66 today. It's crisp and beautiful outside. I can smell fall in the air, and my soul is so happy. So, it, you know, we're back to crock pot dinners and soup and bread. And, and pretty and, soon chili. And pretty soon chili. Um, so these are just foods that we don't cook in the summertime because it's too blessed hot. And I don't like even running the crock pot during the summer unless I run it out on my patio because it's, it just makes the kitchen too uncomfortable and it makes the air conditioner run a lot harder too. So I have my crock pot heating up over here and that is something I do like to do. Um, I don't like to put them, you know, things in a hot, in a cold crock pot, but because we're going to pre-cook this meat, we're going to put it in a warm crock pot. So I have that preheating. And I also have my cast iron skillet over here preheating with about a quarter of a cup of vegetable oil. And let's see what else goes into this. I have about two and a half pounds of cubed steak here. Um, this is a very budget conscious, wallet friendly piece of meat. You can usually get them very inexpensively, and I actually got them with a markdown discount because they were close to their expiration date. I love it when I get markdown meat at the grocery store. It makes it even much, all that much better when you sit down to eat your dinner. And I'm making a lot because I plan on having this as a leftover meal for Wednesday night. We're going to be using, we're going to dredge the steak in some flour, which I have seasoned with salt, ground cracked pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder. We're going to use a 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes, about a cup or better of sliced celery, a medium sized onion that I've halved and sliced, and then the sauce makings. I have two packets of onion soup mix here, and I know I'm going to get comments. I don't care. This is the way I do it, and this is the way we love it. So this is one box of onion soup mix. So at best, this is a dollar if you get the store brand, maybe less. I think I paid 87 cents for this box. Here's a cup of ketchup, three to four cloves of chopped garlic, a tablespoon of tomato paste, which I squeezed from my tube, a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and here I have a teaspoon of regular unsmoked paprika and also a teaspoon of Italian oregano. So I'm going to move our flavors out of the way here and our vegetables and concentrate on our meat. You can dredge your meat any way you like, whether you like to do it in a plate, uh, in a pie plate, sometimes I do it in a pie plate. Today I'm just going to toss this. I uh, put my flour in a Ziploc bag because I thought it'd probably just be quicker and less messy. So I'm going to grab another paper plate. And someone asked me last week, or made a comment, that it was nice to see somebody else using paper plates. And I'll tell you what, if I didn't have Why paper not? plates, it would just be a messier world. It makes sense. And I know, you know, some people think, and not necessarily my viewers, and that's okay, everybody has their own way of living their life, and that's fine. This is just a, a convenience. Um, it can be expensive, you know, to buy the better ones, but i got to tell you, I love me some paper plates. Oh, and I, I wanted to give you a little background on Swiss steak. You know, Swiss steak is really a throwback um, to World War II. Um, when we were on meat rations and we were eating, you know, budget-conscious cuts of meat, you know, the, the cube steak is really something that isn't very good unless it's cooked for a long time slowly um, and tenderized. My, you know, Molly asked me, so where's the cheese, there cheese in it? Because she heard Swiss and thought, um, oh, well, it must have Swiss cheese in it. That's why it's called Swiss steak. Well, no, the reason it's called Swiss steak is because of the process of tenderizing the meat in the butchering world is called Swissing. And that's where they run it through a cubing machine that has blades. And you can see the meat has long cuts in it. Well, they're short blades, and they, they run these steaks through what they call a, a cubing machine 
but the process of that is called Swissing the meat. So that is why this is called Swiss steak because the meat is Swiss. So it's really a verb. Okay, I never knew that. I bet mean, a lot of people just, didn't know that. It was just a style from Sweden or something. A lot of people think that it's called, you know, but if you look at the cuisine of, of Switzerland, this isn't really something you would find. A lot of people just think, oh, Switzerland, because that's where, that's the first place your mind goes to mm -hmm. when you hear Swiss. So now I have to get all of these meat paste and flour off of my fingers. And I have my oil preheating over here on the stove top. And the best part about using the bag with the flour in it, it didn't get all over my counter, or it didn't get all over my counter as much as it would have if I hadn't used the bag. And we just throw the bag in the garbage can. You still made a mess. What did you say? Nothing. I'll find out later when I edit the video. <laughs> Don't worry. All right, so I'm going to carry this over here. And I'm going to get my tongs. We're just going to brown off the steak. I'm going to put them in there until it's brown on one side. And then I'm going to turn it, brown it on the other. And then I'm going to put it directly into my warmed up crock pot. When I am done doing that, I will come back and show you what happens next. Back and Rick is showing you the inside of the crock pot. I've browned off that meat and now we're left with this pan full of oil and rendered goodness. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to saute our vegetables. And I had let the pan cool off just a little bit because I was doing something. I'm going to put in our onions and our celery. And then what's going to happen here, whoops, don't toss it on the floor is that the juices from these vegetables are going to loosen up all these brown bits on the bottom and we're going to put those right in the crock pot with it. Um, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is an easy way to clean your pan and since you have the vegetables out already and the pan is hot, that will work just fine. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is you don't have to use vegetable oil. In fact, one of the recipes that my grandmother used to use for this called for bacon grease um, and that adds another depth of flavor adds a little bit of smokiness to the dish as well so you know whatever you choose is going to work for you and it's going to be delicious so I'm just going to saute these off just a little bit because they are going to be in the crock pot for about four hours so And I'm just trying to loosen up the, the brown bits that stuck to the bottom of the pan. That way they'll get all incorporated with the vegetables and they'll go in as the crock pot. So I'm sorry for the noise, but it's really unavoidable. Because just like fat equals flavor, brown equals flavor. And this is smelling really good. The only other thing I want to do, and I want to throw my garlic in there with it, get that going, because remember, what do I always say, onion first, then garlic, because we don't want to burn our garlic. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my oregano and my paprika right in there. This is going to help to bring out the natural oil, essential oils and the spices. And it's going to flavor the dish even further. Anything you can do to bring out the flavor in something is going to be a bonus. Oh my goodness. Mm. It smells. You just got a whiff, a whiff, a whiff of that um, paprika and the onion and the garlic. It's so fantastic. 
Mm. Okay, and there goes my tomato paste. Every last goodness, every last bit there. And yes, we're putting tomatoes in it. The tomato paste, again, is concentrated and it's going to add an extra depth and richness to the flavor of this dish. Now, the tricky part here, let's see, let me get a spoon. I'm just going to transfer the vegetables into the crock pot. can of tomatoes. And I'm probably going to need this spoon. And I'm going to fill my can up with some hot water. But first I'm going to put the onion soup mix in the can to get it just dissolved a little. This is just to help break up that onion soup mix a little bit more. Let me give it a stir with my spoon. I'm going to pour it in the pot just like that. And I'm going to give this a good judge because we want that meat to get incorporated with all that liquid. Now, the flour that we dredged the meat in and and then we browned it off. That flour is going to help to thicken this dish, even in the crock pot. It's going to be lovely. You don't have to do this in the crock pot either. You can go ahead and do this in the oven. If you want to put this in a Dutch oven or um, in a nice covered casserole or something, you can bake this in the oven on like 300 degrees. I'm going to add another half a can of water. Worcestershire sauce. and the ketchup. Now growing up my mom used to make pepper steak very much like this. Um, she always did it on top of the stove and then she simmered it for like an hour and she would make the sauce with beef broth and ketchup and diced tomatoes and she would cook the meat exactly the same way and then Toward the end of the cooking process, she would slice an onion and a large bell, green bell pepper, and she would slice it thinly. And then she would throw the onions and the green peppers into the pan with the simmering meat and then let that cook for another 20 minutes. And then we would have it over mashed potatoes or rice. And that was always a favorite in our house growing up. Okay, what we're going to do now, we're going to put the lid on. And we're going to forget about this until supper time in about four hours. It's about 2.30 right now. So I say in about four hours it's going to be perfect. I have my crock pot set on high and I'm going to make, I'm going to do a lot of things in that time. I have to can some chicken stock and I have to do some other work on the computer. We're going to make some mashed potatoes and some corn to go along with this meal and when it's time I'm going to bring you back and we're going to fix your plate because I know you're hungry. 
I'll be back in later. Okay, we're back and it's time for supper. And I wanted to show you, uh, I know people have been sneaking tastes of this in this afternoon, but this is no pork mean. tender. This, it just breaks right apart. It's going to be delicious. I made some corn and some mashed potatoes and you know what time it is. It's time to fix y'all a plate. So let me get a plate. Let me turn on my light here. Oh, that's where I turn that light on, right there. Let me get a plate. And we'll serve you up some of this Swiss steak. Let's get you a nice piece here. That's beautiful. Some corn. Whoopsie. Okay. And I think we want some sauce on our potatoes. And I'm making a big old mess. Fork. There you have it. Crock pot Swiss steak with mashed potatoes and corn. That's what's for dinner. I hope you try this and I hope you enjoy it. And until next time, I'll see ya.